All right, let's get into the Word here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, last week I mentioned that there's nine gifts of the Spirit. Three reveal something. Three say something. And three do something. Okay? It's, it's, it, it, what's interesting, what I found when I was studying this is Paul describe, Paul says what the nine gifts are, but he doesn't tell us how, the, how they operate. He doesn't. He just lists them. He doesn't explain them, right? doesn't explain them, but the Bible explains them. That's what's cool. So you can go through the Word and you can see, like I did last week, you see what a word of wisdom is. You see what the word of knowledge is. You see what the discerning of spirits is. We see the examples in the word. That's what's awesome about it. So we did last week, we did the three that reveal something. That's the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Then there's three that do something. That's what we're doing today. We're only going to do one because it's, 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 there's a lot in, to say about it. So these are the three that do something. Uh, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, in the same spirit, by the same spirit, another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. I guess I need verse 10 too. To another work of the miracles. So those all three right in a row, and those three all do something. Okay? And what they do is they display power. They display power. The working of miracles is a power thing. We all agree? The working of uh, healings, you see power there. When you see faith operating in a miracle, you see, or in, 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 in faith will work, the gift of faith will work in the working of miracles and the working of in, in healings. So we're going to deal with the gift of faith. Now, this is not, how many know there's a difference between Bible faith and natural faith, okay? Uh, I remember a guy I worked with, he says, you have faith, I don't have faith. I said, yes, you do. Every man has faith. Now, it's not the God kind of faith that God places in us, but everybody has faith. And I give this example often, people get in their cars, they turn the car on. They don't get, look under the hood and make sure the ignition is working and everything. They trust that it works. People have faith in people. People have faith in stop signs. People have faith in stoplights. In fact, when, the, when somebody blows through the stoplight, they go, their faith really gets shaken. But people have, there's just a natural faith to believe for things. In fact, when you, you believe in uh, somebody else, just in the person, when, they, when they, they let you down, you go, I believed in you. I trusted you. So that's not God faith. That's just natural faith. Then there is the, the kind of faith that God gives us. See, we got, uh, salvation is a total, complete work of God. Complete. He draws us to himself. We don't, we don't choose him. He chooses us. And then he gives us the faith to believe in him. It's the gift of faith. Grace is a gift. Faith is a gift. Ephesians 2, 8. Then, so there is that. And then in Romans 12, 3, it says all believers, speaking to those in Rome, Romans 12, 3 says, to every man is given a measure of faith. Did I give you that, Mariah? I don't remember if I gave you that verse or not. Anyway, it, it, that's the, Romans 12, 3 says that every, to every man has been given a measure of faith. Well, he's not talking to men in general. He's talking to the Romans or, or those in Rome. Okay? So everybody's been given, every believer has been given a measure of faith. And I thought about this, and I thought, well, do some get more than others? I don't think so. Not in the beginning. And I'll tell you why. Because God is not a respecter of persons. So he gives, I believe, I, I don't have scripture for this. This is Pastor Steve's 5.11, okay? Uh, 
because I've got a lot of these here. And this is Pastor Steve's opinion. And that's all it is. But because I don't think God favors one over another. So everybody's given the same amount, and then it's up to us to increase that. And the only thing that's increasing, when you look at somebody like the life of a Judson Taylor, or you look at the life of a, uh, um, you know, a, who's a, a George Mueller in, in, in uh, England and all that, who never took offerings and, and fed these, these orphanage kids every single day. People came, and he never took offerings. His faith was just that great. But his faith grew because he believed in a big God. Nothing, set, nothing uh, uh, stops anybody from having little faith to great faith except us. That's all that's, that's, all that's hindering where your level of faith is. But everybody, I believe, starts at the same place. Okay? That's just my opinion. But everybody's been given a measure of faith. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, that, it, that it, you, have, you can have faith like a mustard seed, which is, now people argue this, yeah, I've seen it on the internet, a mustard seed, it's not the smallest seed of all time. Well, look at, Jesus just making a statement there, okay? he wasn't being emphatic that it's the smallest seed ever known to mankind, he just said it's the smallest seed, okay, and so in any case, so you say, well, Pastor, how much faith do I have to have to believe for a miracle or whatever? Well, according to what Jesus said, mustard seed faith will get it done. It will move a mountain, metaphorically, okay? It, that, that, that's, you know, you think, well, i got to have this great, but, well, a mustard seed will move a mountain. So if there's a mountain in your life, you think, well, how great, how great does it have to be? Well, according to Jesus, it doesn't, it, the mustard seed will do it. it because the potential is in the seed. That's a whole other thing. But, so, and then, so even as small as that. And then it says, and I'm, all I'm saying here, I'm trying to lay some groundwork of difference between faith and the gift of faith. Okay? There's a difference. There's a difference. I'm going to show you. Romans 10, 17 says this. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Jesus said on several different occasions to different people, he said, let it be done according to your faith. Your faith. Now, understand your faith is, it's yours, it's not mine. You have yours, I have mine. But it all comes from God. Okay? It all comes from God. And Jesus actually said that there was, the disciples had little faith, and some, but he reprimanded them for their little faith. But then he told the centurion he had great faith, so it can be measured. And then, but that's the faith that you have. You personally have that faith. But then this faith that Paul speaks of, I said it's different. Why is it different? Because if you look at 1 Corinthians 12, it says that these nine gifts are given as he wills. Do you see the difference? See, I can lay hands on people. We can lay hands on people here. And we're praying not, not as he, just what the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's just my faith of hooking up with your faith and we're believing together. Okay, then the gift of faith, just like a word of knowledge, I just can't get a, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to have a word of knowledge right now for somebody. No, I can't do that. Why? Because it's as he wills. It's on his timing, not on mine. But you can pray for people with your faith or yourself. You can believe for yourself. As Jesus said, let it be done according to your faith. So there's a difference in between what I have as as my faith and your faith, and then the gift of faith that he gives for the working of miracles. There's a difference. If there wasn't, he wouldn't have put it in here and said that there is something different. Okay? So, I would define it this way. It is, the gift of faith is the gift 
of the Spirit or by the Spirit to the believer that he or she might receive something. Okay? It's you receiving. The difference is the working of miracles is a gift that the Spirit gives to the believer so that he would work a miracle. One is passive, the other is active. One is I passively receive the gift of faith. The other is I perform or work the miracle as he wills. Okay? So there's, there's, there's a difference. Now the working of miracles or, or the gift of faith is, is in operation and it's outside Okay, listen to this. It's outside of what you can believe for on your own. That's why it's the gift of faith. It's not just, it's not just my uh, uh, faith that I have. It's a gift that God's given me at a specific moment. Does that make sense? Okay? So I'm going to show you how this, how this operates in, in, because it's actually in the Bible. It better be. Okay? It's as he wills that he gives this gift on, this, on occasions where you don't really have the faith for it. But you receive it, and then you pray in faith, or you do whatever it is that God tells you to do by faith. Okay? You, ju you just receive the gift. Okay? So it's beyond or greater uh, than whatever measure of faith that we possess of ourselves, but we still have to receive it. We still have to receive it, okay? Because it's just like salvation. Here's the gift. Do you want it? Here it is. Here's the gift of faith right now. Do you want it? You want to operate in that right now? Here it is, okay? Same thing, same thing with the word of knowledge. God gives it to you. It's yours to receive it and to give it to somebody or a word of wisdom. He gives it, you, you sense it on the inside, I'm supposed to say this to somebody, I sense the Lord's supposed to tell me this, then what do you do? You offer it, you, you do it, you step out, he's given it to you, the gift is there, it's the gift of the Spirit, amen? All, all nine are gifts, you receive them. So, let's go to 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17, this is an example of the gift of faith. This is... Uh, that wonderful character called Elijah. Do we have an Elijah in here? We got Elijah right over there. Elijah. Taking up prophets of Baal and all that good stuff. First Kings. So this is after. This is after Elijah takes out the prophets of Baal and now he's running from Jezebel. Running from Jezebel. Chapter 17, verse 1. Now Elijah the Tishbite. How would you like to be from Tishbite? Of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, by her whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed at the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now let's, let's look at this situation. So he's going to be fed by ravens out of this brook, out of this water. Now think, he's going to eat meat that comes from an unclean bird. I mean, you know, a raven is a scavenger. How many of you have seen crows? A crow is just another degree of a raven, all right? They're just a little smaller, and they're, they're really smart. And they like, what do they call it, carrion? Yes, yes, yeah, carrion. They like to eat food that's already dead, you know, laying in the road, chipmunks or squirrels and other things, and they eat them. And so 
these crow, this, this raven, does it say raven or ravens? I can't remember if he said ravens. So these ravens go and find dead meat. Now you're an Israelite and you know one thing is you don't eat ravens and you don't eat food that comes from that, that they are picking up because it's unclean. The meat is unclean. The bird is unclean. So it's going to take some kind of faith to eat that food. And that faith was not of his own because he knew, I, I don't eat this. I don't, I'm not supposed to eat this. But God said, eat it. And so he believed it and he received it. There was a gift of faith beyond what an Israelite could normally believe for because it was unclean. There is the gift of faith in operation, okay? He receives the food by faith, by faith greater than his own. And so another way we could call it would be special faith. It enables us to believe for God to undertake in a supernatural way. Understand, these gifts are all supernatural. They're supernatural gifts, every single one. And so I want to just tell you, I've had this operate in my life. And listen, I'm not, listen, I am not special. You guys know me. You know me pretty well. Most of you do. I'm not all, I'm not this man of great faith and power. But God, I, there's been times where I've just did what the Bible said to do. So I, uh, one morning, I'm at work. I get a call from my nephew. My brother has collapsed. Now, so my brother had a hip, he had his hip replaced. And typical of my brother, uh, doesn't always listen to the doctors. And he didn't take his baby aspirin. And they told him, you got to take this baby aspirin because if you don't, you're going to get a, you could possibly get a blood clot. How many know who Jerome Kersey was? Basketball player. So Jerome Kersey had the same thing that my brother got. So it's called a, a, a pulmonary embolism. What happens is a blood clot came down on my brother's leg, and he would been, he'd been complaining about, I, my, my leg hurts. Anyway, so he's, the, he had a blood clot. It went up his leg, split into, at his lungs, shut his lungs down, he, he quit breathing, he was out of it for several minutes, his wife gave him, uh, uh, you know, CPR, called 911, by the time I got up to the house, he, they were putting him in the ambulance, ran him to the, am, ran him to the hospital, Jerome Kersey had the exact same thing happen to him and he died. Mo a lot of people do not survive a pulmonary embolism. Extremely deadly. So we got to the hospital. So I ran to the hospital. Get the, he's in the ER room that's like right there by the entrance. I mean, it was right there. And he's got tubes and things and all this stuff. And, and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, this is, this is bad. This is really, really bad. And I knew I got, I saw, I just, I said to my nephew, his, his son, I said, I go, I, I got to pray for him. I got to pray for him. He says, go in there, Uncle Steve, go in there, pray for him. And I'm telling you, everything that looked like and what I knew had happened, it was like, I, I don't know what to believe. I don't know how to pray effectively. And the gift of faith came to me. And I laid my hands on him. And I knew when I prayed for him that God did something. It was beyond me. And I walked out of that room and I went, I just, he's going to make it. I just knew it. And I'll never forget the look on my dad's face when he came through that hospital door. He was, he was like, this is, this is the worst thing in my life. This is the worst thing I, in my life, seeing my son, you know. And so the doctors come and they said, you know, he wasn't breathing for several minutes. And we, you know, we probably, just letting you know. The likelihood of brain damage is very likely could happen. We don't know. And then they said, listen, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta bring his body temperature. We're gonna put him into a, an induced coma. We're gonna drop his body temperature down. We're gonna do all this stuff. And all my family, they're all, oh my God, I'm going, he's gonna be okay. I tell them all, he's gonna be okay. How did I know that? The gift of faith. That's all I can tell you. 
I knew that I knew that I knew, and I knew it was beyond my own, beyond myself. And so they did all that, and we all hung out there for weeks, for a week or more. Did all we, my nephew and I were doing work mostly out of there, and his friends were coming up there. People were coming all the time, and they go, and they go, what do you, pastor? You know, they because they all all his friends, my brother's friends, they've known me since I like really really young, and they'd say, "Are you praying?" I go, "No, I'm not praying." I go, "Well, have you been praying?" I, I prayed once. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. And I remember one of my nephews coming to me. He says, "Have you been have you been sending them up to the big guy?" And I go, "I did it once. He'll be fine." I know he'll be fine. So they raised his body temperature up. They got him back up, and they said, we don't know when he'll wake up, if he will. He's in a coma. We don't know, but we're pretty sure he, he will wake up. Sure enough, December 24th, day before Christmas, best Christmas present we all of us had. As much as he could give us a lot of grief, he was, we were glad he was alive. You have to know my uncle, or you have to know Lindsay's Uncle Bill. She, to this day, Lindsay and Steffi always kind of have a rough time with Uncle Bill because he doesn't know who's who. He can't tell them apart. They're third, they're, they're, she's almost 30. Lindsay and Steffi is over 30, and he still can't figure out who's who. So, in any case, so he wakes up, and it was just, I, I, I just, you know, what can you say? I just gave God the glory because I knew that there was something happened there that was beyond me, that, that my faith that I have. Listen, I've walked into a lot of hospitals and seen people in some really dire situations, and it's happened to me twice. How many know Lee Tash? Lee Tash, I prayed for Lee Tash. He got hit on a motor, and he was riding his motorcycle when he was living up in uh, 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 Corbett. And a horrible accident, and I got there. His, his wife, uh, you know, uh, Susan called me and said, go pray for him. And he was out of it. And if I remember the story, Andy might remember, but he was out of it. But he said that he heard me when he was in a coma. He heard me pray for him. And he, and, uh, and he knew that, that he'd be, he was healed. And uh, it's crazy. And, and again, he was all you know, tubes and uh, he was all beat up. I mean, broken bones all over the place and, and stuff. And God just used me right there. And there was another instance where, um, I, I don't want to give too much information on this. Yeah, maybe I better leave that one alone. But anyway, uh, okay, okay. It's, I, I just got to be tender about how I say this. A young girl, a baby, had been shaken really, really hard. And we got the, the mother, uh, the grandmother called us, Annie and I called us. And I don't know why, but it's just the grace of God to this day. I don't, I have no mental, I have no mental picture. But I know that that baby's head was about that big. That big. It was horrible. She had fractures on her arm and her leg. And we went in there, and I tell you that, that, that what I saw, like, like I can't, I don't have, I have no mental picture. I, 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 to this day, I can't remember what she looked. But I remember that her head was really, really swollen. And uh, and we prayed for her. And that young lady is probably 20-some years old now, and perfectly healthy. God just used us with the gift of faith. That's all I can give you. Uh, yeah. And then one last one, since we're sitting here, and this gentleman is here, uh, Daniel, when you were born, when Daniel was born, he had complications. And Dion went in there, and he prayed, and Dion told me, the gift of faith laid on me, and I knew it, and he prayed for Daniel, and Daniel was healed. I don't know exactly what it was. What Was it your heart? Yeah, he had a, something wrong with his heart. Yeah. So these, this was this so exciting, folks, is you'll, you won't know when, just, just receive it. When, when, 
When God tells you to do something, you go, well, I, I just, I don't know if I have the thing. Just, if he, just do it. And the, God is telling you to do it because he'll do. It'll be a faith beyond yours. It's a, it's a special faith that he in, lays on us. And he's still doing it. The gifts are not gone. If they're gone, then those things didn't. Because I know it wasn't just what I could believe for. It was bigger than that. All right? So, uh, let me see. Where was I going? Those, those are some pretty awesome testimonies, are they not? Um, has, uh, oh, praise God. Okay. Now, we have other examples in the Bible. We have other examples in the Bible. I would say Daniel in the lion's den. I would say that when Daniel went in there and those lions are there, and, you know, he just, well, I guess I'm just going to get devoured. But God gave him the ability to believe that he was just going to be fine. The three Hebrew children went in there thinking, well, if we die, we die. But they didn't. And God operated there. We see, we see it, and sometimes, sometimes the gift of faith will will be exercised over time. Like Abraham and Isaac and Joseph, they all pronounced blessings over their offspring that didn't happen right there, but they happened later. They said it and believed that it would happen later, and they did. Those things happened later, those blessings that they pronounced over their offspring. So the gift of faith is a special faith. And, and just in closing, there's, as I tried to explain to you, there's a difference between believing God with just general faith for things and then appropri and appropriating his, his promises. And then there's that supernatural manifestation which is passed from one to another through the gift of faith. There's a difference there. If there wasn't, then it wouldn't, he wouldn't have put it in there as he wills. Because there's other times the Bible says, you lay hands on the sick. You pray. He says, for the elders to lay the hands like we did on Abby, for the elders to lay the hands and pray a prayer of faith, anointing with oil, and they shall be healed. Well, that wasn't special faith. That's just us praying a prayer of faith. You see? And so when I walked into that ER room that day with my brother, it was totally different than other times that I've walked in the hospital and prayed for people. And sometimes not, it, didn't, it didn't go well. But it's not me that does anything anyway. It's not, I can't, I, you know, my former pastor used to say I can't heal the wing on a gnat, a broken wing on a gnat, and neither can I. So there you have the gift of faith. So the next week we'll do uh, probably working of miracles. We'll do the working of miracles and then gifts of healings. All these things are as God, see, they're there again. Can we, can we believe God for, for healing for somebody like we did today? Yes. But then there's this supernatural manifestation that's a gift of healing. And we'll talk about some of these things that happened in the past and happen maybe even now, but especially in the, in the 40s and 50s during the healing revivals. We'll talk about that. All right, some little history there. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift of faith that you give as you will. And Lord, we thank you that we are, we'll be obedient and we will, we will uh, uh, endeavor to hear the promptings of your Holy Spirit, and, and see you work in and through us for your glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen.